my friend. It's number one. And people are literally laughing as I say that because you've been more in the news lately than fucking Donald Trump. <laughs> yeah, I have. I have. Are you building a wall? What's going on? Well, <laughs> Mexico and a paper, right? <laughs> uh, no, I, I guess there's, there's not a lot else to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> I, believe it or not, I, that was the thought that went through my head. Because I mean, I've, I've never been in the press this much in my entire life. Uh, I mean, even when we were doing you know, the big numbers, and, yes. and our raise would have been at the top of your list. Right. We did, we did, we did $45 million. Yes. Uh, but of course, you know, that with, with great uh, money brings great responsibility. I guess. Oh, no, or no, or maybe the great, the bigger they are, the harder they fall kind of thing. Uh, which... I, I'm certainly a big boy. Yes. <laughs> yes. Did, we did fall pretty hard. Yes. But is that what it is? It has like a Yante Logan. When I'm reading this, because in America you, it wouldn't, this wouldn't happen. Like you wouldn't see. There was a, how many articles have been written? Ten to twenty articles that I've seen. Yeah, just in Swedish, yeah. Just if in you, Swedish. If you look at worldwide press, you're up to 50, 60, 80. Though. Right. So. Content of me. Uh, but not many in the U.S. I would imagine. Only the specific Bitcoin ones. And certainly not right. mainstream. Right. Bi Bitcoin, Bitcoin specific articles. Yeah. The Wall Street Journal wrote about it on the way up. They've yeah. done nothing. Well, you're, in fairness, you're a massive player in the Bitcoin universe. Sure. So, of course, the Bitcoin press are going to cover this. This is, a big, this is very big news in their world. So, but it didn't influence the price of Bitcoin, strangely. Like, Bitcoin seems to still be going up. I, didn't, I don't control the price. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to put that out there. Uh, no, it, it, unfortunately, on the day we announced, the price was 4.40, the day we filed at 9 a.m. And it rose, it started rising from that afternoon. I would have it's it, pure coincidence. I didn't do it. Right? <laughs> but I would have assumed the opposite somehow. I, yes, in, in theory, this means that there's less Western companies in the Bitcoin space. It's basically all now controlled from China or this, Georgia in the US. This is what I heard. And this is re one. very much related to what, what went down. And to summarize, for the people who don't know, KNC Miner, uh, there's the blockchain, and you were essentially were the biggest player in computating the blockchain. Yeah, the biggest European player. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We were one of the biggest players in the world two years ago. Now we, we lost that title. And, and this essentially, China, from what I understand, I've been hearing rumors, but I'm, this is what we want to get into, because you basically had to file bankruptcy, yep. because from what I understand, China is now getting, the government wants to support the companies that are doing that, and they're giving it free electricity, or what's going on? <laughs> We can speculate. Okay. Uh, certainly. So basically, at the start of this year, our numbers looked great. They were they were perfectly fine. There was not a problem. We were about to do an, another fundraise. You know, uh, go after you know maybe EQT. Uh, they're in the room. No, I wouldn't come knocking. But um, to to double down because the unit uh, economics work. But in Stockholm, our overheads are large, should we say? And when our competitors are in China and they don't have the same overheads as us, and they had access to more capital than we did. They were basically able to outpace us. Oh, because they go big on stuff. They go big. So we own, still, or operate, the three largest data centers in Sweden. We're not small. But we only got three. They've got now, if they had the same size as us, 200, something like that. Jesus. So the volume that we just, we just cannot compete with their ability to massively deploy these big facilities. Wow. And so, so it hit us really hard. Uh, and then when we do the projections of our market share going down like this, and there's going up like that. Uh, it basically means that we took advice from all the legal representatives we could find. They said, do what's right for the board, do what's right for the shareholders, do what's right for the suppliers. My responsibility as the CEO goes from my shareholders to the creditors at some point, some point along that way. And nobody can actually tell you when my personal responsibility kicks in. So I don't want to be responsible for paying back you know, $45 million. So I need to know I'm doing things right. And so that meant that we had to file ourselves first. Pretty shit. You know, it goes up. It came down really hard, really fast. Uh, the numbers haven't changed. The Bitcoin price has gone up. That just means that our competitors are now even more well-funded. Mm. They're going to make even more money. They're going to deploy even more machines. So our facilities in Bowdoin still, this month, will produce a million dollars free cash. The month afterwards, half a million dollars. Uh, our running costs uh, in Sweden are basically half a million dollars. And that's because there's a fundamental change in the yes. architecture yes. that was pre-programmed <laughs> at the beginning of the Bitcoin. Beginning of Bitcoin time, it was decided every four years, the number of new Bitcoins going into circulation will half. So it has a very, very long half-life. 
it goes through another like, 2140 will be the last new coins in production. Meaning you'll be working just as hard, but you'll get half the value out. Exactly. Exactly. So basically, the, the amount you can sell the coins for stays the same, in theory, but the amount they cost you doubles. To get them. To get them. Your cost of coin doubles overnight, with nothing else changing. <laughs> well, literally in a split second, which is coming in June or July? July the 10th is predicted. Bitcoin has been in the press for years, as, you know, criminals use it, drug dealers use it, terrorists use it. KNC must have been doing something like that, and that's just bullshit. What, what was the most humorous... Uh, as assumption that you were... Oh, look under Sam's mattress, the coins will be there. <laughs> <laughs> is that what it said? <laughs> well, a lot of people. I mean, there's no missing coins. Is there? Have a no, there's just a lot of people that think that, how can we have messed this up? Right. How can we have gone from... I think that's what confuses people, because you're one of the... It's still, it's still positive today, we're bankrupt. Right. It doesn't make sense, right? Yeah, it doesn't make sense. But what... Uh, <laughs> it's and that's the problem. Help, help, help the audience understand, because... So it's, it's to do with legal responsibility and doing the right thing. And the right thing by as many people as possible. Essentially, you knew you were going to be out in the long term. We you didn't know with certainty. There's never 100% certainty. I cannot tell you what the Bitcoin price will be tomorrow. Can't do that. Yeah. So you have to err on the side of caution. And when you have these big investors, you have these law firms you know, advising you to do the right thing by as many people as possible then there becomes a point in time where they say, look, enough is enough. And we started looking at this in, in January with our, with our shareholders and our, and our directors. Well, what were you looking for? You already knew you were in some kind of potential trouble at that point? Or what, what was the issue? Uh, no, so what happens is the amount of coins that we produce gets readjusted by the competition, also mining, every 14 days. <coughs> so we know with near certainty how many coins we'll produce for the next 14 days. And if someone builds 500 facilities in those 14 days, then obviously the period afterwards, we're going to produce a lot less coins. So our visibility window is very, very, very narrow. And what we could see is, is that it was basically encroaching on, on what would be our cost of coin. And it would Let's use this simple me the mining metaphor. You're, you're digging for these coins. Yes. And what happened is, is the Chinese got very serious about digging for coins. Yes. And they brought in an army of people to dig for coins. Yes. Metaphorically, that's a good... Hey, it works, yeah. And then yeah. you realize, oh but shit, we can't really compete with an army of people digging for coins. And what they did is, because everyone's looking for the same coins, is their army came in and, and basically pushed us down to a small space. And what we can do is we know how many, in your analogy, how many troops they've got for the next 14 days, but we don't know how many they've got for the next two months. And what happened is they kept replicating their troops. And they just kept building more and more and more. And so as soon as we get to the, the closer we get to this July 10th, this deadline, the more exact we can be about our predictions. And as soon as they become negative, that's when I'm supposed to raise my hand and do the right thing. Mm. So that's what we did. So you realize the army, it was almost like that, what's that movie uh, with Sauron, the Lord of the Rings, and you saw the, <laughs> what's that big? It was a dragon in The Hobbit coming yes. out and destroying it now. And it, it, it's, it's, just, it's just our visibility. When you're selling an app, when, you, when you're on the app no, store, But what are the orcs? You saw the orc army coming. <laughs> I don't, I don't. <laughs> Okay, we're going to go with the analogy. Let's use soldiers. <laughs> okay, fine. Uh, it's basically the, the window that we can see into the future is only 14 days. That's really it. And when you're building an app and you can see your trends, you can predict 6, 12, 14, you know, 14 years in the future, you can, you can follow it. Yes, it varies, but ours varies tremendously, and it's big, big numbers. And, and all we did is we saw constantly getting closer to negative. As soon as we knew, with near certainty of negative, that's when we're supposed to have done. Got it. So you just were able to predict your situation. And so here's the question. What lesson is, were you able to pull from this that we can, the audience might be able to... Don't, don't get VCs involved. No, actually, you have to listen to them. Uh, they were the ones that advised us uh, from the very beginning. We we're very glad they came in when they did. They've helped us through this ride. We've had a tremendous ride. Up, down, left, right, round. We've been beaten. We've been, we've been all over the world. It, it is definitely take the advice. But make sure you take lots of it. Don't listen to one person, because if you do listen to one person, they will sway you to what they want. And there's thousands of people out there that will tell you great advice, and they'll just sway you to what they think is best. Get, get a whole bunch of people advising you. you know, set up an advisory board inside your company. 
get some people that have been through this kind of thing before. Most of the questions I had, uh, they were the first time that, that our partners had, had you know, heard it. But I made sure they went and found someone with experience to come back and say, actually, Sam, you need to be thinking about this, or you stay away from that situation. So use the VC firms for the advice, Don't just, not just for the cash. Did you have conflicting advice going on? We had difference of opinions, we always did. Uh, ours is, a, is definitely a bumpy ride, but they get narrowed out. And we, we have regular board meetings, and we have regular discussions, lots of content updates. And, and literally, with more information, most people have a logical mind in this business, and they can be you know, turned around to be on the side of, of logic, and that helps. More information. And any other tips that you have? Having just Raise more cash. <laughs> if we'd have had more facilities, we would not have been in this situation. Our facilities are positive. They still will remain positive after the halving. If I'd have had 10 facilities, we wouldn't have gone bankrupt. Uh, Even with the competitors coming at us harder than they've done. So we were... Yeah, I just love to have raised you know, another $50 million and we would have been home and dry. But never mind. Say <laughs> lovey. And what are you going to do next? I don't know. I've got two small children, right? During this, I've been in KC for three years. I've got a child who's five and one who's two. Uh, and my wife, who's been very understanding up until now, we <laughs> being all over the world, uh, has basically said, you've got to take summer off. <laughs> so I've, I've got to take a bit of time off to spend some of my kids before they you know, leave home and go to university. Uh, so I don't know. I'm going to be still in Stockholm. My wife is Swedish. My children are Swedish. I still live here. I'm going to be around and about, and I'm probably coming here pitching for a new startup sometime soon. Cool. You, you're welcome Good back story. here anytime. And thank you for sharing. It's not every day that we have, an, you know, one of Sweden's biggest you failures. Know, failures <laughs> live on stage. <laughs> I fucking love you. You're such an amazing guy, though. It's like. But shit, shit happens. Shit does shit happen. Happens. And, just, and, and that, that uh, hopefully that we'll get more of that on stage. Like, like no more shit. No, don't get me wrong. No, but I think... I just, open I think, and honest that we've always been. If people approach us information, we've always tried to give it. Unfortunately, a lot of people will speculate. And, and that really you know, is annoying, but it happens. And it's going to happen to everyone. The press will write what they want to write. Don't let anyone tell you you can control them. It doesn't work. You can't do it. They will make up, before they even ask you the question, they've made up what they want to write. I'm, I'm sure there's some guys in there that are writing now already. That's <laughs> I can see the headline now, Sam Cole says. <laughs> yeah. and, and don't run, they'll, they'll take a quote. I'll, I'll speak for five minutes because I speak a lot, right? And they'll pick out three sentences and they'll say that they contradict each other. But if you look at the whole passage, it doesn't. But they twist it. That's their job. They write exciting news. <laughs> But thank you for taking the time and giving us the, the whole story. I want to see if anyone has a question, because this is a kind of a rare opportunity. Sure, yeah. shoot. Um, Sam, so why didn't you see this coming? Because if you started a company that does, does Bitcoin mining, you would have known that there's massive competition coming from qualified uh, CPUs and GPUs on special machines. And you would have known that the prices are halving in a specific time frame. So why didn't you predict this? See, this is, this is part of my issue. I, I've answered this question in the fact that we can see 14 days in advance. I cannot see four years in advance. I started the company three years you're, ago. You, yeah, no, but there's, there's but a... This, this is a very good point. It, it, it does require quite a bit of going over the same facts again and again and again. We can see the unit economics. We can make predictions. We've got no guarantees. If you'd have told me what the price was today, three weeks ago, we wouldn't have filed just yet. But you can't predict the future. We simply don't know. You have to look at all the information you've got. We raise it based on good investments. We try to, to guess or, or second guess or try to come up with justification as to what the competition will do, how they're going to do it. But in the end, if they have advantages that we don't in Sweden, then there's not much we can do about it. So just to be clear, if you can get $45 million telling investors you have two weeks of financial information... Everybody knew, every single time, how far we can predict, with certainty, how long it becomes vague, what the variables are. You, you cannot raise funds for people and lie to them. That, that simply doesn't work. That doesn't work. If you do that, there's no way you can raise twice from the same people. And we've raised three or four times from the same guys. This is a great point as well, because you, you 
I remember when Crandom was here on stage, they told the story. They were begging to invest. In yeah, they took six months before they... And you said, well, I'm not so sure. And please, please, please let us invest in you. Yeah. They said it themselves. You're yeah, like, they did. Yeah. 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 So I did see articles that implied that you somehow tricked investors in. And I was like, wait a minute. I heard those same investors that's, tell me that yeah. they begged him to invest. If you start trying to trick investors out of cash, that's just a recipe for disaster. That, that doesn't work. That, that doesn't work. Hmm. Another question. So Bitcoin mining has very little to do with the uh, Bitcoin price of the ecosystem. So Bitcoin themselves can still be used to trade and purchase and, and buy goods and services. That can still go along, even if mining is, is hard to enter. Ma Bitcoin is what we call a permissionless. You need to ask nobody permission to take part. So if you want to take a billion dollars and build some facilities in the most expensive place in the world and waste all of your money mining, Nobody can actually stop you. You can still do that. But the barrier of entry is normally considered when people want to make a profit mining, rather than just commit to the network. And then the, the economics come into play. You've got to find a really cheap place, and right now China is the cheapest place. And that means you've got to play by the rules inside China. But nothing's actually technically stopping anyone with enough capital just moving that to say, right, now Florida control it all with 35 cents energy prices. Let's have it controlled in Florida. It's Losing $100 million a year, but it's now in Florida's control. So you really have to look at all the data. And most of the world's manufacturers, I'm pretty sure everybody's phone in this room was made in China. Pretty sure. Right? Nobody's going to disagree with me there. So the fact that most of the world's Bitcoins are made in China, it shouldn't really scare anyone. It doesn't scare me. That's just where it's cheapest to make them. Do we have any more questions? Dan, well, so this Ooh, is good. Good. Daniel's got a question. Now, and for the record, Daniel's probably written more articles on this than anybody. So go ahead, Daniel. <laughs> Hi, Sam. How are you doing? I'm good, mate. So I'm, I'm uh, not involved by uh, the course here for the Elite Talks. A little bit louder. Uh, my name is Daniel Goldberg. I'm the managing editor for EI Digital, which is Stoggins Industries' trade publication. I don't think I ever wrote that you kept the coins in your mattress. But <laughs> no, I actually have a sort of putting that to one side. You say you would have loved to raise 50 billion more euros or dollars to build more data centers, right? Yes. And you're saying if you had done that, you would probably still be investors and you would probably still be uh, profitable? Yes. That sort of implies that you put that question to your investors and they said no. Yeah, so our investors were That's a great question, our investors were never they they'd given us forty five million dollars already, two large investors, uh, from Crandom and from Excel. They were both willing to take part of the growth round, but not to lead it. You have to go to a growth fund, you had to get to get that kind of money. And if uh, you're comment about so, it, so, so, exactly. Yeah. So just to, I, I suppose the follow up then is that when did you put that question to them and why did they decline to give you further funding? Oh, so the, the decline, it was not very much of a decline. It was Sam go to, in the spring, because we spoke about this in December, they said in the spring, let's do a growth round. So that, to them that means February to March. And the competition started coming at us in January. So when we, when we talked about the, the larger raise before window. Christmas. Your window's like that. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but they would have definitely taken part if we'd have got the growth round. But when we started to go into defensive mode rather than aggressive raise, that's when the strategy kind of changed. And can we sell it to the competition? Can we get the money out of it? How long could we milk it before, before it goes to zero? So we started to go into protection mode from about March onwards, something like that. But uh, if we would have had the competition hit us in April, then maybe I would have raised in February. I want to invite the EQT team to come yes. up in the chairs while we do sure. like one more question. <clears throat> Yalmar and Lars, everybody. Um, and here's your... Let me show the seating arrangement here while we do Oh, yeah, question. this is really, really important. Yeah, right? Yes, you, you, well done, Lars. Right. Uh, another question? That was a great question, then, obviously. Yes? Does, does this um, um, change anything in, in the Bitcoin and uh, the blockchain world? Uh, that, that everything is moving to China, okay? doesn't it matter? 
Yeah, does this have any bigger it, implications? It's, it's, that's a, it's kind of a religious question, really. I, I mean, technically, no. It's become still Bitcoin. It's still, the algorithm is still there. The code is still free to everyone to use. It is permissionless. You don't have to ask anyone's permission to join it. But in, in reality, if people trust less or, or have less trust in the miners, then yes, it will have a negative impact for them. The size of that negative impact doesn't look to be um, representative of the coin price, which is still rising, even though 98% of the trading is in China and now 75% of the mining is in China. Coin price is still going up. Cool. Cool. There we go. Right. So I'm just what Sam. I just have to say, uh, Sweden. To, I mean, in America, we really kind of recognize failure as part of the process. And uh, in Sweden, I think we still have some progress to make in that regard. And you are helping in a major way in that right now. You're clearly intelligent. That you've also not only the brain but like the heart and uh, jumped at the chance to come do this and share this with everybody. So please, let's thank you. Brings us.